New York, in, in California, or in the Philippines. In, oh, we have some people from, from Doha, Qatar. Hi, Karen. Welcome to our uh, session from, hosted by PICPA International. We have one from LA, Brad. Okay, just type in your location, please, so that I know where you're coming from. Oh, we have some uh, participants from Riyadh, Michael. Okay, excellent. Angelito from the Philippines. I think it's now uh, very early morning in the Philippines and we have Manny from Canada. Hello, Manny, wonderful. Okay, so I think we can, we can move on now. So first of all, the reason why I have uh, chosen this topic is, is especially right now we have, uh, you know, a lot of our, our fellow citizens and Kababayans are quite struggling with the pandemic and we you know with, with the uncertainties of, of our, of, of their jobs. And th this somehow, I hope, uh, can help them in, in terms of finding um, other source of income uh, through investing. And, and when we do that, and we know that investing is quite dangerous, and this is not something that is that I recommend to everyone because it is something that you know only those people who has this kind of perseverance and and uh, with, with with the the determination to really analyze and and perform the due diligence so that you cannot you cannot uh, lose your hard-earned money and and avoid the costly mistakes of investing. So let's move on. So right now, a lot of us are, are quite dependent with the salary. And, and even Warren Buffett is saying, never depend on one single source of income. Always create that second source. And the problem with, with, with this, if you are highly dependent on your salary, by the way, don't get me wrong that, you know, I, I don't have a problem with employment. I don't have a problem with, with salary. My only problem is if you are highly dependent on one source of income, which is your salary, meanwhile, on the other hand, you have a lot of multiple outflows. You have your tuition fee for your kids, you have your operating expenses, your rent, maybe your mortgage, your, your transportation expense. Now, now, with all those multiple expenses, multiple outflows, so if you are highly dependent on one source of income, which is your salary, my friend, second week or third week of the month, you will be financially struggling, okay? And that is why I have developed this kind of cash flow honeycomb so that we can perhaps get some enlightenment that now with a, with a lot of multiple outflows, the only way you can sustain and live comfortably, give a very good life to your family is having multiple inflows as well. Okay, now one way of getting, you know, um, multiplying your revenue streams or your cash flow streams is by having some deposits in the bank. Okay, and with that deposits, you can have some interest income irrespective of, of the amount. Another source could be, you know, a lot of uh, your, your friends, your, your, your colleagues could be borrowing money. There's no such thing as free lunch, uh, especially nowadays. So you could be earning some interest from those loans, okay? So don't be shy in charging interest if you are lending money because there is, there is a cost of capital. There's, a, there's, there's cost in that kind of amount that you are lending. So that could be another source for you. Now, if you are into business, and, and I know and I've seen a lot of uh, Filipinos uh, taking advantage of of the social media and now they are into selling um, almost everything online. Now, this is one source of your cash flow where profit from your businesses, you know, you're hustling on the side, selling products uh, in the internet. This could be another source of income for you. Another is, another income is if you have some uh, real estate properties or any asset that you can rent out. Rental income is another source where you know, it's, it's, a, it's completely passive income, especially if you have, let's say, condominiums or, or apartments that you can rent out. 
very, very good positive cash flow for you. And if you are into investing, and this is where I want to uh, uh, focus our discussion right now, is into capital gains and dividends. Uh, is, is there any questions so far? I'm hearing some, some uh, comments on the side. Anything who wants to, to share something, feel free so that we can make this interactive. Anyone who wants to share, uh, I think there's something who wants to share something. Uh, at this point, Lyndon, I would like to acknowledge the presence of one of our sponsors, Lilwyn Lucas Dyer from New York, from New York Life Insurance. Very good. Lilwyn, can you say hi or question Lyndon? Yeah, please go ahead. Hold on, she's muted. Hold on. Thank you very much to our sponsors. Without them, it may not be possible to give you this kind of high quality programs. Okay, she's, I think she's not ready to speak. Sure, we'll no get, problem. We'll, we'll get back with her later, yeah? Yeah, let me know whenever she's ready and then maybe we can give her some time. Okay. Okay, now, now let's continue. So now if you are into investing, there are two ways on how you can make money. In fact, there are multiple ways on how you can make money from investing, but I would like to focus on at least two things. First is the capital gain and second is the dividend, okay? So as we know, the capital gain is where you are buying something at a low price and due to passage of time, the value of that property or the, uh, of that asset is increasing and that appreciation of, uh, of those assets in value is your capital gain. Now, when it comes to the dividends, assuming you have invested in a company and, and the company have uh, their operations, they're selling, and after removing all your expenses, and as we know, uh, as CPAs, we know that um, once you have completed your PNL, your income statement. Hello, let me call line, them. Hello. Go, go ahead. Uh, okay. Go ahead, Lyndon. Yeah. Sorry. Please. I, I thought there are some some people who wants to share something. Now, when you have uh, reached your net income. This net income will be distributed or can be distributed to all the shareholders in the form of dividends. And if you are a shareholder of any company, you are eligible for this kind of dividend. So this is the whole cash flow honeycomb that you can consider in, in and this is the best way to achieve your financial freedom. So bottom line, if you are highly dependent on, on salary, my friend, you need to, you need to really consider uh, looking for multiple sources because uh, at this stage of our of our life right now uh, it's very very challenging to to live comfortably give a good education to your kids uh, coming from uh, one source of income so I hope this is a very good eye-opener for everyone that uh, while we are you know trying to enjoy life at the same time we need to think of how we can use our time our skills and how we can maximize our cash flows. Now, the, the main point that I would like to discuss are the following. First thing we will discuss, how to become financially smarter. As a CPA, uh, unfortunately, we have a lot of uh, Kababayans who are, uh, despite of working for a number of years, still they are struggling financially. And it's very painful to see some people who are you know, 15 years working abroad, 20 years working abroad, and still uh, they, they, they have not yet achieved the, the financial freedom at, until this point. So I hope for those who are in that situation, I hope you can, you can take some, some insights from the session. And then we will also talk about investing in a master way. And uh, maybe I will also talk about the power of compounding which is very important in terms of how you can accumulate and build your wealth from uh, small 
interest or small income, but if you try to aggregate those, uh, the income that you have, then it could be big at the end of the day. So we will try to give some scenarios in, the, in that point. And then we will try to understand, are we really investing or you are just speculating? You know, a lot of uh, Filipinos are saying, I bought this, I, and, and even some of my friends uh, in PICPA, they are inviting me to, to invest in Bitcoin, in cryptocurrencies, and so on and so forth. But the, when, when, when I'm asking them about, by the way, what's, what's cryptocurrency? What's, what's Bitcoin? And they're saying, you know, something. If you cannot understand, if you don't understand, and if you cannot explain what you're getting into, then my friend, you are not investing, rather you are just speculating, okay? So we will try to analyze and assess ourselves, am I really investing or I'm just speculating? So we will find out. And then we will uh, uh, dive into how we can perform due diligence when we are investing. And it sounds so complicated because in real life, uh, being in, in, in big four and doing a lot of due diligence for, for global banks, uh, it's a very complex process. But what I have done is I have prepared a very simplified formula so that we can apply the due diligence in our daily uh, investment journey. And then uh, in the end, I might uh, give you some insights on certain principles that I personally um, apply in, in my investment journey. So these are the main agenda that I, that I will uh, uh, discuss tonight. Now let's move on. Now, why do you need to be financially smarter? The reason for that is you need to know how to manage your, your finances so that you can achieve your financial freedom or so that you will be prepared for future needs. So that includes also cash flow planning, that includes debt management if you, are, uh, if you have cash, uh, personal loans or, or, or mortgage or whatever uh, loans that you have, uh, that includes in, in, uh, in the financial planning. And of course, uh, if you have dependents, you know, it's very critical for you to have insurance as well. Uh, knock on wood, something goes wrong, what, what will happen to your, to your, to your kids, to your, to your dependents? So it's very important to have uh, insurance coverage as well. And then, of course, investment and tax, you know, I'm sure you don't want to have, you know, issues with, with IRS and BIR. So it's part of the uh, financial planning. State planning, college, and retirement planning for those who are, you know, our uh, uh, senior uh, brothers and sisters who are, you know, approaching the retirement age, you need to do, uh, you know, financial planning as early as possible so that uh, you, you will be more prepared in, in, uh, in your retirement uh, period. So these are part of the overall pl financial planning that we need to do. And the main reason why we need to do that is I know a lot of people who are stressed. They are um, struggling every day. They don't have peace of mind only because they don't plan properly in terms of their finances. So one of the main benefits of financial planning is you will have peace of mind. And I know how uh, hard it is to, to be, you know, broke and you know you don't know where to where to uh uh where to get uh funds for 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 your tuition fee for the kids tuition fee or for your for for your food for your traveling and, and so on and so forth so financial planning will definitely help you if, if uh, in in achieving peace of mind now so the reason why i i wrote this book and i published this book is the, the concept of uh, M Vestor, okay? The M Vestor. The concept of M Vestor is while we are working from 8 to 5 or 8 to 6, sometimes we are quite hard working until 8 p.m., 9 p.m. So, as I've said, I don't have a problem with employment, I don't have a problem with salary. The only problem is if you are highly dependent on that salary or that employment. Something goes wrong with, with a company or your employment, what will happen? Now, the concept of investor that I'm trying to promote in Piso Master is you are actually combining the active income from your employment plus 
the passive income from other sources or investment. That's, that's the secret of a lot of wealthy people. Okay? That's the secret of wealthy people. The concept of combining the active income and passive income. So that even though you are you know, taking vacations in, in, in Vegas or in, in Europe or maybe in, in Boracay or anywhere, hopefully I'll see you here in Dubai as well. So while you are having vacation and enjoying life, your cash flow streams are continuously flowing in because you have passive income so that you are not afraid to lose your active income or, or you are not uh, quite uh, you know, desperate for, for the active income because you know your passive income is there to support you. Okay, so that's the whole concept of investor, which is I'm trying to uh, promote and advocate in, in PC Master. Okay, now a lot of, a lot of us are, are doing a lot of investments, you know, in, in left, right, and center. And even sometimes we, you know, uh, a lot of uh, ladies' friends are, you know, trying to rationalize that buying a Louis Vuitton bag is, is an investment. And even some of my friends, uh, they said, yeah, I bought a house there. I, I bought a car. This is an investment. Now, if it is not falling the definition of investment, then I'm sorry, my friend, it is not an investment. If that asset or, the, or the, the item that you have acquired is not generating income for you, you cannot call it an investment. Yes, it is an asset, but it is not an investment. It must be generating cash flow or income for you. Or if it is not appreciating in value, you cannot call it an investment. Okay? It should appreciate in value. And, and the last point is there must be a return or reward. And that is why, it's, you know, we're very common, I mean, uh, familiar with, with the terminology called return on investment, the ROI. If there is no return with the investment or with that acquisition, you cannot call it an investment. So I hope we will no longer justify whenever we see S-A-L-E in the mall trying to Calculate and say, justify in yourself that this is an investment. If it is not generating income or if it is not appreciating in value and then there's no return or reward, I'm sorry, my friend, that is not an investment. I hope that's, that's clear. Let's move on. So I've just listed here some benefits of investing. Of course, you can achieve financial, your financial goals if you're into investing. And just like Warren Buffett, he created this wealth uh, through investing and you can, you can be financially secured if you are into investing. And of course, you can be more prepared uh, for certain emergencies if you are uh, investing. So these are just few benefits of, of investing. Now, let's move on. When you try to invest, there is a concept called the higher the risk, the higher the return or the reward, okay? Or the higher the return, the higher the risk. So there are certain low risk kind of investments or we call it savings so anytime you go to the bank the bank will give you your money you go to the atm and try to withdraw they will the, the, the atm will give you your cash now it's almost very negligible kind of risk but the moment you try to invest in stock market in bonds in mutual funds in real estate in, in commodity although i included insurance here there is certain level of risk that you need to take okay the higher the risk, the higher the return, okay? Now, the main point I would like to discuss is about stocks. And this is the, the PISU Master and, and this book uh, all about, okay? Now, what is a stock market in the first place? So when you hear the word market, you know, you go to the market to buy something, right? The market is the place where you can buy anything. You can buy, you know, you can buy and sell something. But when you hear the word stock market, this is the place where you buy and sell stocks. Okay? The stock market is the place where you can buy and sell stocks. The stocks represent the, your, your, your ownership with the company. Okay? Now, why people go to the stock market and invest? As I mentioned earlier, because there's capital gain. When you purchase, let's say, Tesla, uh, shares, 
at this price. When it goes up, that's your, the difference between your selling price and your, your buy price, that is your capital gain, okay? Now, the dividends is after, for example, uh, Google or, or Facebook, after, they, after, the, after one year, they will try to compute their net income and that net income can be distributed to all the shareholders in the form of dividends. So if you are investing in those companies and they declare dividends, you will be part of that dividend. <coughs> so it's, it's, it's a very legitimate kind of platform uh, and you are participating in the growth of the country and the economy if you are in the stock market. Now, and how the capital gains work. As I mentioned earlier, uh, if, you have, if, you, if you are, let's say, if you bought something, uh, let's say this is, uh, you bought 10,000 shares at, let's say, eight dirhams, which is almost, let's say, $2, for example, uh, and you, 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 you sold that, uh, that stocks at 11, so you, you have around three per share capital gains. So that's around 37.5%, which is something you, you cannot get from, from deposits in, in the bank. So maybe uh, at best, you can get around 1%, 2% from the deposits. But in stock market, as, as good as 20% uh, per week or sometimes even per day, depending on the, on the market, and especially now during the pandemic, the market is, is almost at the all-time low. So this is the best time to buy. Now, how the dividend works? Now, there are four dates that you need to remember in, in dividends. First is the declaration date, okay? The declaration date is when the board of directors are meeting and approving the financials and at the same time declaring that they will distribute the dividends. So that announcement and that approval from the board is your, is your declaration date. The X dividend date is something that you need to remember, okay? The X dividend date is the date where you are actually trading without the eligibility of the dividends. So that's the first day that, that the shares is being traded without the dividends. So your key point is you need to know, you need to get in and buy the shares before the X date, okay? And that's what I call the last chance. So right from the declaration date until the day before the X date, that is your last chance to be eligible in the dividends, okay? And of course, the record date where the investor relations will call the, the stock exchange and say, can you please give me the list of all my shareholders as of this date? And if you are part of that list or that record, then you will receive the dividend at the payment date, okay? So in this example, uh, declaration date could happen in March 6, which is my birthday, and again, X dividend is April 3, so your, your last chance is up to April 2, depending on the last uh, trading day, okay? Record date is when the, the investor relations or the company or the CFO will request for the list of all the shareholders and you will receive your dividends on April 30 at the payment date. I hope this is coming out clear. Now, uh, this is just an illustration of, uh, of dividends calendar. So assuming I, I, I have 1.3 uh, million pesos to, to invest, uh, sorry for those who are in the US and other countries, my example here is in the US as I'm being uh, quite active in the Philippine Stock Exchange. Now, assuming I'm investing in JFC, in Jalebi Food Corporation, in, in San Miguel Corporation, Aboitis Power, Globe, BDO Bank, and so on and so forth. And then uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the year, I am getting this kind of dividends every month. And at the end of the year, I will get around total of 70,000 per year for 1.3 million investment. So I'm getting around 70,000 per year, which is only on the dividends without even, without even considering the capital gains, okay? So that's around 5.4%, per, uh, which is better than the uh, deposit rate in the bank, okay? Now, before I move on, is there any questions so far? Or, or uh, I'm hearing some, uh, some voice, maybe you wanna share something, guys? None? Okay, I, I'll continue then. So the power of compounding 
is something that we really need to appreciate. And um, I would like to talk about the 72 rule. Okay. Uh, even the Bible is saying, who is, he who is faithful in very little is faithful also in much. And who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. So we need to be a very good steward in, in those uh, little income because when we try to aggregate those income, it will be uh, big at the end of the day. So the, the power of compounding is uh, using 72 rule is something like this. So I have given here at least three scenarios, okay? Three scenarios and, and let's find out the really, the, the power of compounding. Now, assuming you are 29 years old and you have invested 100,000 dirhams or $100,000 or 100,000 pesos, whatever it is, and you are getting 4% return, return. So 4% rate. So now at the end of 65, at, at, at the age of 65, your 100,000 will become 400,000, okay? So that's the power of compounding, meaning at 4%, 72 divide four, meaning double your money every 18 years, okay? This is scenario number one. Scenario number two is you are 29 years old, you have invested 100,000 dirhams or pesos or dollars at 8% interest or 8% return. At the age of 65, your 100,000 will become 1.6 million, okay? It could be in dollars. Now, imagine the difference between 4% and 8% and compare the difference between 1.6 and 400,000, okay? It's a big difference, right? At 8% interest using the 72 rule, meaning 72 divide eight, it doubles your money every nine years, okay? Now let's move on in scenario number three. You are 29 years old, you're investing $100,000, at the age of 65, your 100,000 will become 6.4 million at 12%, which means double your money every six years. So just imagine, imagine the difference between 4%, 8%, and 12%. It's seemingly it's not so, so, so you know, significant, but you know, a lot of CEOs, in, in, even in Wall Street, even here in, in, in the Middle East, can be terminated only by missing 1% of the target. That's how big deal it is because they know the power of compounding, okay? Imagine the difference between 6.4 million and the 400,000, okay? Just imagine it, it's quite big amount. The difference of 6 million could be in peso or in dollars is actually the difference between, is, is actually equivalent to a person working for 25 years and receiving 20,000 per month, okay? Your six million is actually the salary of a person getting uh, 20,000 per month for the next 25 years, okay? That's, that's the power of compounding for you, okay? Now, if you think that, you know, 12% you know, is not that much, but if you try to aggregate and accumulate it, you are actually advanced for 25 years than the rest of the, you know, of investors or, or employees, okay? Now, there is something I, I, I want to talk to, to emphasize on this, that the time is a very critical element in your investing. You cannot say, you know, I want to invest here and, and, you know, I'll become a millionaire one, after one month or there's no, there's no such thing as, you know, quick reach approach, no way. Because time is an important element in your investing for you to get your desired ROI. And, and as I always say, it takes nine months to create a baby, no matter how many people you put on the job. Meaning <laughs> there is a time element, there's a time element that you need to wait. It's not something that you invest on a quick reach approach and, and, and you expect that you will, be, you will become a millionaire overnight doesn't work that way, I'm sorry, okay? So you need to remember that time is an important element in the ROI. Without the time, it could be 
too good to be true. Okay? Without time, it will be good, too good to be true. And a lot of people are getting scammed because they thought, you know, they can, they can eliminate this kind of, this element uh, in investing. No way. So I hope it's a very good reminder to everyone. Now let's move on. Let's look at investing and speculating and, and try to assess yourself. The last investment you had, were you really investing or you are just speculating? Let's find out. Now, when you talk about investing, you're actually looking at a, a satisfactory or you know, a, a very reasonable kind of return by taking a very reasonable kind of risk as well. The moment you try to you know, expect abnormally high returns, and in that sense, having the, the rule of the higher the risk, the higher the return. Now, if you're expecting abnormal high returns, then you are taking abnormal high risk as well. And in that sense, you are not investing, rather you are just speculating, okay? So, and, and for me, speculating may not be really equivalent to gambling, but speculating is what I call the blind investing. You are just, you just don't know what you're getting into. So now let's find out whether you are really investing or speculating. So in, using the time horizon, if you are investing, it's, it's more on long term, okay? It's not a quick reach overnight uh, approach. So you are saving for the future. The moment you try to look for, let's say, short, short term kind of investing and say, I'll get 30% uh, per month, no way. You are just speculating, okay? And if you are taking, you know, unusually high kind of risk, you are speculating. If you are too aggressive, then you are speculating. And the best example is if you are into uh, FX options or cryptocurrencies, then um, I'm sorry, you are just speculating. Unless you are highly trained and educated to do those kind of investments, okay? Now, the last part I would like to talk about is the investment due diligence, okay? When you talk about due diligence, this is actually a deep level of review or investigation in any business. But the key word here is prior, before you do your investing, before you sign up a contract, before you give your hard earned money, you need to do due diligence. And, and uh, as, uh, as I have observed, you know, ladies, I, I, I saw a lot of uh, ladies uh, participants tonight, ladies are actually Naturally, naturally good in diligence. They are, they are born with this kind of uh, skills. Diligence is like, you know, it's part of their system. The moment they, let's say, they're walking in the mall, they saw, you know, uh, they see some, you know, clothes or bags. The, the first thing they will do is check everything. Is there any, you know, overrun or stitches or some damage here? They, they, they try to check and analyze anything, okay? And I, I just remember in, in the Philippines, we have the so-called CINOMAR, the Certificate of No Marriage. And this is quite, quite uh, uh, interesting for, uh, for those people who want to get married in, in the Philippines. The Certificate of No Marriage is part of due diligence that before they get married uh, a guy, they need to make sure the guy is single. Okay, this is part of diligence as well. Now, in Tagalog, the, 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 the diligence is, is what we call kilatis. You need to know. You need to kilatis. You need to, uh, you need to investigate. Is this the right person that I, that I can entrust my money? Is this the right business for me? Are, are they, uh, are they uh, uh, experienced in handling or, or growing my investment? So all those uh, uh, questions should be asked. Uh, before you give out your hard-earned money. So while diligence is very complex in, in, in the real world and uh, having experience in, 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 in financial diligence, it's, it's a very complex uh, process. But what I would like to share with you is my, my personal formula that uh, I hope it will help you in your investment journey, uh, something that I try to simplify. So first thing is you need to know the demand. Is there a need or demand for this company, for this product or this service? Because if there's no demand, then there's no customer who will buy or avail the product. You will not have any customer. 
because there's no need, right? If there is, maybe few customers, you know? So if you don't have a customer, what will happen to your, to your income statement? You will not have your sales, okay? And as, as we know, your sales is computed by your quantity times your selling price. So if you don't have the volume or the quantity of sales because there's no need or there's no demand, what will happen to your net income? It will be even at a loss or maybe zero or very, very minimal net income. So part of your due diligence, the first question you need to ask yourself is, is there a demand? Is there a, is there a need for this company or for this product or this service to exist? Okay. Second is you need to know the level of risk you are taking. What is the inherent risk in this business? And as I remember, Warren Buffett is not investing in technology because he doesn't understand the risk, the inherent risk in that, in that industry. Okay. So inherent risk is something you need to ask. What is the risk I'm taking in this so that you can expect the level of return? Or it could be vice versa. What is the level of return that I want so that I know and I can assess the level of risk I'm taking? Okay, so inherent, inherent risk is something you need to, you need to know uh, before you give out your hard-earned money and, and uh, before you invest in anything. Next is the legalities, okay? Is this legit, okay? Do not invest on something that has a big question mark on the legalities and the legitimacy of, of the company or the investment. Now, especially nowadays, a lot of, uh, maybe a lot of your friends in social media will just invite you to invest on, you know, very, very lucrative kind of business, 50% or double your money in two weeks. You need to find out, you need to check first and ask yourself, is this legit? Is this registered with the SEC? Is this registered with, do you have a, a business permit? Are you registered with the IRS or, or BIR? All those questions should be asked, okay? Now, another point that you need to find out is the, get the information, especially in the financials. So check what is the source of my R ROI. Check the financials. Look at the balance sheet. Look at the income statement. Find out the real operation. What is the core business of this company Okay, before you, before you invest? So all these kind of questions should be asked. And especially if you are looking at the information, the financial information, you need to know what is the source of my return on investment. I know we, are, we were talking about ROI and it's in the form of percentage, but in due diligence, you need to know what is the source of your ROI. If your ROI is coming from the left and right and the down lines and it is dependent on the number of recruits, it is not a good investment. Why? Because the moment you, you, you get... Uh, you get in into that kind of investment where your return on investment is coming from the number of recruits in left and right, the downlines, I can bet, I can guarantee that your investment has been the ROI of your upline. I know you, you, you know what I'm talking about, okay? Let's move on. You need to find out who are the people, the governance team behind the company. Are they uh, the people with integrity? Or, or they were involved in scandals or, or frauds before. So you need to check because you, you need to find out who is the CEO of this company? Who are the board of directors? Do they have the capacity and the experience and, and, and the knowledge to run the business so that your, your, your investment will grow uh, at a desired level? So you need to know, read the profile, check the website and find out who is the CEO and maybe uh, check the profile of, of the of the board of directors. Uh, a lot of a lot of us are just you know investing blindly without knowing who will run the, the company, who who will take care of my money. So this is a very critical point that you need to do in the diligence. Next is you need to find out what is the economic landscape and how, and what is the strategy of this company, especially nowadays. And this is something what I learned in in Harvard, the so-called VUCA, the VUCA world. The world, the business world is, is very volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. It's a book of business world. Now, if the company is not having an effective strategy and they don't know what's happening in, in, in the economic 
uh, uh, area, then they, they will not be able to survive the competition, okay? And, and as, as we know, the, the, the technology is, is removing the borders uh, in, in every country so that, you know, companies from, from the U.S. can just uh, do business in the Philippines or in the Middle East. Uh, you know, it's like a borderless kind of uh, business world. And uh, so we need to find out, you need to know, what is the economic landscape? Is the company, uh, uh, is the country at the booming stage? And what is the company strategy in, in, in taking those kind of opportunity and what's happening uh, in, in the country, okay? Next is the nature of the business. You need to know what is the, the core operations of this company? How, how do they make money? So as I've said earlier, Warren Buffett is not into technology because he doesn't understand the nature of the business and how it, how it works. So nature of the business is something very, very critical, okay? So find out what is the core operations, what's the nature of the business, uh, and of course, you need to know whether the, the nature of the business is legitimate, okay? Uh, don't, don't get into uh, something that has a big question mark on, 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 on the nature of the business. Next point is the compliance with regulations. Yes, you could be legitimate, okay? You are registered with the SEC, but if you are not complying with certain re regulations, then you, what will happen to your income statement? you will have a lot of penalties and, and fines because of some breaches or, or violations with certain regulations, okay? Especially, for example, if you are investing into, let's say, uh, banking industry, if you're investing into healthcare. So those kind of industries are, are quite highly regulated by, let's say, the Department of Health or uh, the Central Bank. Now, they need to comply with those regulations. So you need to know check the, the income statement. Are we getting into a lot of uh, penalties from the regulators? And the worst scenario is, the worst scenario is their license can be revoked by the regulator as well. So you, you need to find out and ask them, uh, ask the people uh, that you're uh, giving out your money, are they really complying with regulations? Okay, this is a very critical part of your due diligence. And the last point I would like to, to uh, highlight is the equity valuation and the shareholding. You need to know if you are investing, let's say this much, or let's say $100,000, what could be, what is the ratio of that 100,000 in the total uh, equity? Sometimes your, your 100,000 is supposed to be, let's say, if, if, the, if the total equity is, let's say 1 million, Okay, and you have invested 100,000. But because they have overvalued the equity, they have um, overvalued the overall, uh, the valuation of the, of the equity, then rather than having 10% in the overall shareholding, you will just have, let's say, 5% or 1%. So you need to find out what is the ratio of your investment out of the total uh, stockholders equity, because the equity valuation and your position in the overall equity is, is the, the, the driving or the determining factor to your uh, voting rights, to, your, to, to the number of, to the weights of your votes, and also to the dividends and your uh, liquid, uh, liquidation share. Okay, so uh, the number of uh, shares, uh, you need to find out what is the level of your investment against the uh, total equity. So, these are, this is the, a very simplified formula, and I hope it can help you in your, in your investment. And uh, even the Bible is saying, lazy hands make uh, for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. Now, before I, I uh, end my, my talk, I would like to share with you the five principles that I personally uh, apply in, in my investment uh, uh, journey. First is, Pour, out, pour all your nickels and coins into your pockets. And sooner or later, your mind, uh, from, your, from your pockets into your mind, and sooner or later, your mind will pour gold into your pocket. So the, the message I would like to highlight here is you need to invest in learning first, okay? Do not invest in 
in in uh, you know in stock market or or foreign currencies or, or any anything without proper knowledge okay it's very dangerous the risk you are taking is you first is you will not get your desired return on investment and second is you, even your principal okay, will be wiped out okay so invest in learning second is you need to find what are those undervalued assets because you gain at the time you buy not at the time you sell okay so find out and identify is this overvalued or undervalued go with those undervalued assets and and if you if you remember uh the the, the richest man one of the richest men in in the philippines uh who is into uh, real estate he is buying uh lands in the philippines at the time right after the typhoon okay so that all those flooded areas uh, uh, will be somehow undervalued because it's you know flooded so and and that's the best time to buy that's the best time to invest if this is undervalued so from the undervalued price when it goes back to its original price all of that will be your capital gain the third point is buy and wait for the right time to sell this is the time element i was talking about Patience more is the key. Okay, PM more is PM is the key. Next is follow and closely monitor your investment because investment is a long-term commitment and not a one-off transaction. Okay, so you need to remember that. The last point is speculating is the same as blind investing. So do not invest, do not entrust your your hard-earned money with someone or something that you don't know. Okay. Do, do your due diligence and analysis first before, before it's too late or do not invest at all, okay? Thank you very much for listening and I hope I have uh, imparted some knowledge to all of you. Um, my name is Lyndon Maxino once again. Let's be connected. I'm quite active in, in Facebook. Uh, you can uh, uh, find out my, my, my account, Lyndon Maxino and Piso Master. You can also visit my website, pisomaster.com. And you can write me an email at author at Thank you hey, very Lyndon. much. Hope Lyndon. to see you next time. Yeah. Oh, hey, Lyndon, we got a question from Calgary. Can sure. you check the chat window, please? Okay. Uh, I have uh, legal investment in mutual funds. Is, is it safe to keep uh, this during the pandemic? You know, mutual fund is, is quite a low risk kind of uh, uh, investment because all the money, the reason, the, reason, the reason why it's called mutual fund, the concept is all the funds will be uh, combined and it's a pooling of funds and it will be invested into stock market, into real estate, into bonds. So in terms of diversification, mutual fund is, is quite good. The only problem with, with mutual fund is if the manager, the fund manager is not, is not good, okay? Because they might be, you know, uh, they might be pressured with certain targets. They might be uh, quite aggressive, you know, just to, to hit the targets and to, you know, because their bonuses are, are, are based on the, uh, the performance of the investment. So th that's the main reason why a lot of investment companies uh, and mutual fund managers are, are uh, getting into trouble because they, 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 they are quite aggressive into, into investing. But otherwise, mutual fund is a much safer kind of investment compared to uh, stock market and to uh, you know, doing it on your own and directly investing into stock market or in other investment vehicles. So uh, another advantage of investing in mutual funds is you have, uh, you know, quite experienced people who are managing the, the funds. So uh, rather, if, especially if you are, um, if you don't have time or you don't have the, the skill sets or the experience in, into investing, then it's, it's better for you to deal with fund managers going to mutual funds. So right now, uh, I think it's a, it's a better approach rather than gambling your money with, 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 uh, with little time that you have or little experience that you have. Thank you. Uh, another question from Opel. Thanks for the assurance. Great topic, present. Thank you so much, Opel. Okay. Uh, Greg Luayon. Uh, 
it also depends on what theme are your mutual funds in. That's right. So there are different combinations. Thank you, thank you, Greg, for, for highlighting that. Uh, because there are, it depends on what you have chosen, uh, kind of level of risk. For example, there are combinations of uh, low risk, uh, medium risk, or high risk. The higher the risk, the higher the return. And it depends on the number of uh, uh, diversifications that you have done. So they, they try to allocate the, the, the uh, pool of funds into different vehicles, into different investments. Uh, sometimes if, let's say, into stock market, they will try to go to technology, to blue chip companies, to high risk companies, startups, and so on and so forth. And others will be invested into real estate, into bonds, into uh, uh, other, other investment vehicles. So uh, that's absolutely right. Depends on how they have diversified the, the funds. Thank you. Uh, Karen, okay. which is this? yes, uh, Brad. No, I was just going to acknowledge the question coming from Karen Benavides Karen. from Qatar. Thank you, yeah. Thank you Karen. Uh, which is the safest and profitable that you can recommend to invest with as for starting? Okay, for 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 uh, if you are starting in in investing, and uh, what I what I personally recommend, if you if you saw the five principles start investing in yourself okay so start investing in yourself uh, take a lot of courses in, in, in for example if you are into stock market uh, there's no harm in getting books or you know uh, uh, you know enrolling yourself in, in, in a course and invest in learning first second is if you are starting into investing find out those kind of low risk kind of investments for example, if you want to, to, to invest into stock market, then go to the blue chip companies first. Blue chip means those are the companies who survived you know, multiple storms in the past. Those who are having a very solid financial statements, uh, giving out a very good uh, dividends in the past, and those are visible in your trading platform. It's all, uh, it's all uh, open book, it's, uh, it's available online. So you can, you can check in your, uh, in your bank, uh, uh, who are you know the and, and apply for your online trading account, and in all those information is available in, in in the online trading platform. So it's for it's just for you to, to read and analyze, uh, uh, get yourself into uh, you know business news, find out what's happening in the economy. Uh, but first thing, invest in some kind of low risk blue chip companies. Maybe mutual fund is is a good option for you. And, but I know the, the lower the risk, the lower the return. So mutual fund is kind of low risk for me. And that is why they're giving uh, uh, low returns as well, because they, there is a, uh, uh, a manager's fee for the fund managers, and they will be charging you every month, whether you gain or loss, they'll be charging you some, some, uh, some, some amount. So it depends on your risk tolerance level as well. So you need to find out your, your risk tolerance. So first thing, uh, if, 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 if it's fine, uh, try to get a copy of Piso Master. It will help you into your investment journey and into your into stock market. So this is a very nice book that I just published last year, in, uh, late last year in December. So uh, check, check the website, pisomaster.com. And it, you may, even if you, you don't buy a book, you, you'll get a lot of insights and good materials from the website. Uh, Larry, thank you for your uh, question. How about investing in Bitcoin? What is your take uh, about this type of investment? Uh, Larry, I, I, fully, I fully acknowledge your question, but uh, let, let, this is my personal view, okay? Um, I, uh, you know, some, some speakers, some, some investors may give you a different, different perspective, but this is my personal uh, view since you asked this. Now, my, my view on Bitcoin Bitcoin is created as a medium of exchange, just like your, just like your, your fiat currency, right? It's, it's supposed to be the, the tool to buy and sell something, right? But the moment you try to misuse anything, for example, I bought, if I have an iPhone and I use it as a hammer, what will happen to this hammer, I mean to this phone? It will be damaged, right? So what I, what I mean by that is, 
Bitcoin is created for as a currency, not as a not as a uh, as an investment, and and not definitely for speculation. And there is no right now. Uh, there's no intrinsic value that you can that you can identify from Bitcoin. I know a lot of people that you know become wealthy and they. But uh, for me, it's it's a very risky kind of investment. Get right for first thing, it's no there's no intrinsic yeah. value. Uh, it's not it's not that's not the very purpose of why Bitcoin is created. Uh, it's mm. not supposed to be for investment or, or for speculation. It's supposed to be for medium of exchange. Great. But uh, that that's my that's my perspective. Uh, that's that's my two cents, uh, uh, Larry. Okay. Uh, Romeo, is it recommended to invest in blue chip companies during the pandemic? Okay, uh, Romeo, it's, it's a very, very good question. The pandemic is quite, quite unique, okay? And it, it, it hurts all the markets, all the countries, all the, all, you know, almost everything. Now, depending on the, the nature of the business, you know, there are a lot of blue chip companies. But dependent, it's dependent on what is the nature of the business. So you need to find out, is this, um, is this company uh, surviving the pandemic? First thing, are they into healthcare? Okay, healthcare is, is, is a very good uh, 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 company to invest with. Second is, are they into something that will ease up reach, uh, the company reaching their customers by using technology? For example, e-commerce right now is booming in the middle of pandemic. Can you, can you imagine that? Okay. Second is, third, third is you need to check, is this uh, giving the basic needs uh, of people? Okay. So those who are dealing with the basic needs, they can survive the pandemic. And even here in the Middle East, a lot of companies are shutting down because they are not into these three categories. So again, uh, it's very recommended to go to the blue chip companies who are uh, you know, having good financials, check the income statement, check the, 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 the return on equity, look at the ratios, uh, but more, more than that, find out whether they are in demand even in the middle of pandemics. First thing is healthcare, uh, basic needs, and second is e-commerce or, or dealing with technology. Okay. Thank you, Romeo, for your question. Uh, second is Karen. Uh, thank you so much. I invest more than two years for myself uh, before getting a uh, very good, very good uh, Karen. Thank you. Uh, online learning schools, that definitely Roland. Yes. So those who are dealing with, uh, you know, leveraging on technology, they, will, they can survive or even uh, prosper in, in, in the middle of pandemic. That's very good. Okay, any more questions, clarifications? I hope we can meet uh, some other time, uh, Brad, uh, Roland in the US. Uh, hopefully uh, all of you are, are doing well and uh, safe there. Uh, although uh, the news uh, are not so overwhelming, but I hope you are all well there. Uh, Larry, I want to retire in five years. Any suggestion of what to invest? Uh, Larry, if you don't mind me, I know your, your location right now, if you don't mind, so that I can give you a, a more reasonable, uh, suitable advice. Although I'm not, I'm, I'm not an advisor, but uh, you're in Canada right now. So first thing, Larry, you need to check what is the, uh, what is the situation in Canada, okay? What are the things that you can, uh, or, or opportunities that you can take advantage within the community, okay? And second is, if you are planning to retire uh, in Canada or in other countries, then just enjoy life, okay? Uh, if, you're, if you are retiring and, uh, you, know, uh, you, you know, all your life you could be, you know, working hard and, and you, you, you save quite a lot, uh, my personal take is just enjoy life. And maybe on, on the side, uh, you can have uh, investments in, in safe, uh, companies like blue chip companies find out those companies who are giving uh, good dividends, eight percent dividends and above. Okay, eight percent and above dividends. 
just park your money there rather than getting uh, 1% per year. So uh, invest, buy stocks of blue chip companies with high dividend yield. And, and the dividend yield is your dividend amount over your stock price. That's the dividend yield. So uh, you can check out uh, what are those companies in Canada that are giving out a very high dividend uh, yield and just park your money there. And, and you know, it will be like your pension getting your money every month. And if you, if you remember the, the dividend calendar that I have presented earlier, uh, then that could perhaps help you also in putting, uh, you know, diversifying your, your funds into different companies so that every month you're getting your dividends like your, your monthly salary or your, your pension. I hope that's quite useful for you, uh, Larry. Thank you. Smart and beautiful. Thank you so much, Larry. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and still very young. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that uh, uh, comment and uh, compliment. Any more questions, guys, before I hand over to Brad and to Roland? Otherwise, uh, I hope makita kita tayo and I hope to meet you soon in, in person. Uh, once again, uh, good morning from Dubai. Back to you, Brad. Oh, okay. thank you very much, Lindon. Let's thank give you. him a warm applause. Okay. All right. So, uh, by the way, um, on behalf, once again, on behalf of uh, the uh, core group of the PICPA International for this uh, 2020 20 year uh, webinar by uh, Zoom US, we would like to thank you, uh, Lindon for giving your time to us, support and everything. Oh, by the way, I don't want to forget. Did you know that Lyndon Magsino was a member or was an attendee during 16 years ago in our first PICPA International Global Convention in Las Vegas in the year 2004? Wow, 16 years ago. And look at him, he is still helping us and supporting us in this. Don't, uh, don't, don't tell the years. Uh, well, 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 I'm saying, I'm saying. Oh, don't, don't, don't tell the years. Well, please take note, Lin Lyndon. As accountants he's, and as still pretty young. numbers, we just play with it. We can always delete. We can always adjust. We can always make adjustment. No, no problem. Okay. So I don't worry about numbers. We can play with numbers. All right. So as accountants, we are really lucky. We can play with numbers. We can go into good investment. But I want, so, I really want to. That's uh, why, that's why there's a joke. There's a joke there. Right. Do you want, to, so, do you want me to tell a joke? No. Uh, well, you, you, can, you can have it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll listen to you. Okay. I so there were, three, there were three professionals who were asked, how much is one plus one? So engineer lawyer, and then the last one was the accountant. So the engineer, when he was asked, engineer, how much is one plus one? So he needs to be very, very precise, otherwise the machine will blow up or the building will collapse. So he answered two. So now comes the lawyer, attorney, how much is one plus one? Well, it depends. We have to argue inside the courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now comes, now comes the accountant. Oh. Mr. Accountant, how much is one plus one? The accountant said, how much do you want? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. That's a good one. All right. So let's give uh, okay, Manny Felicio a big, big hand for that uh, nice job. And before, uh, before anything else, uh, we would like to thank you, uh, Lyndon, for your uh, thank you, Lyndon. very nice presentation. Thank you, Thank you, Lindon. And uh, with your permission and also the permission of all the speakers globally, uh, we would be sending your resume and your presentation to all the attendees to this uh, webinar. And that's one of the uh, housekeeping that I want to announce from time to time. Uh, but of course, asking your permission first before we do that. We will be sending that by email together with their uh, certificate of attendance, if, if we can, okay? All right. Secondly, all the guest speakers will receive two certificates, okay? 
First is the certificate of appreciation as guest speaker. And the second is the certificate of attendance. All right. So it will also be sent by email. Third, uh, I want to make sure that all the attendees will really receive their certificate of attendance. So please, just to double check with me, please send me an email that Hey, Roland, uh, I want to receive my certificate. So I'm, I'm sure nobody, nobody who attend today will be missed to receive their certificate of attendance. And that is at my Yahoo email, pickpainternational at yahoo.com. All right. Third, we are still uh, inviting guest speakers for our next, uh, you know, PICPA international uh, webinar, Zoom. Uh, by the way, that will be too. on September 19, always third week. All right, September 19, it will be every month now. So September 19, that is a Saturday Pacific, Pacific Daylight Savings Time. But we changed the time in order to get the more market. We changed the time, it will be Pacific time, it will be uh, 5 p.m. our time to, to 10 p.m. five hours and Philippine time will be September 20 it will be a Sunday and it will be guess what better for you 8 a.m. up to 1 p.m. all right so that will be that will be better we have thought about changing the time because of you see what happened today is a lot of people they want to attend it's just that uh, they, let's face it, they're still sleeping. So, <laughs> so, so that's why we are changing the time from then on, from starting September 19th, September 20 to be exact for the Philippine uh, time zone. It will be from uh, Philippine time, it will be from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Philippine time. Okay. Third, I mean fourth or last, if I may. Uh, like I said earlier, we are still... Uh, inviting probable interested volunteer guest speakers for our next September 19 or September 20 Philippine time uh, webinar. All you need to do is if you're interested, just send me an email, send me your resume and also your uh, proposed topic. By the way, the theme is COVID part two, but it doesn't need to be only COVID, about COVID. You could, you could uh, think about uh, or propose about any topic about financial, accounting, audit, tax. It could be local tax or international taxation. That would be good because our audience, remember, is global. So the thing is this, you are actually uh, promoting yourself to be a global speaker. Let's face it. That is the advantage to be a global guest speaker. Another thing, we give you the full authority to update your resume that you could include being a guest speaker global in this, in this uh, webinar and so on. So we give you that uh, authority or the right to update your email, I mean your resume, that you have been a guest speaker global on today's webinar. How's that, all right? So uh, if there is no other question as of this time, uh, let's once again, let's give a big, big hand to uh, Lyndon Maxino for a very nice presentation, very informative. Thank you, Lyndon. All right. So now uh, let's give now the uh, floor or the microphone to our main coordinator, Brad Ford, please. Hi, everyone. Our guest speaker 